So the GameCube and Game Boy Advance were initially designed with some 3D capabilities in mind, more so the GameCube. Games like Luigi's Mansion in particular were tested with stereoscopic 3D, which makes a lot of sense. Each room in the game almost feels like you're peering through a dollhouse, so it definitely would feel right at home with the feeling of depth 3D allows. However, while the GameCube did have the necessary components inside it to display 3D imagery, like you can crack yours open right now and we'll find the technology required for such a thing, Nintendo opted to just scrap the feature for consumers as it would have been far too expensive for a headset accessory and even a TV capable of 3D back then. It was always difficult for me as a kid to understand why sometimes 3D was expensive as it was and other times it was included in a $5 Walmart DVD. Now, I definitely understand the type of 3D Nintendo was testing with the GameCube but was much more robust and functional while the cheap red and blue paper glasses made more sense for a picture book or something. But I think my childhood mentality of why is this 3D more expensive than this 3D is something many people had, which is why more elaborate expensive 3D devices didn't catch on too much. So how about some games that just support those cheap paper 3D glasses? What's the worst that can happen? <sighs> and these games are bad. This type of 3D is called anaglyph and is generally one of the cheapest ways to achieve a 3D effect as crude as it may be. You're not gonna get very lifelike depth out of these things. They work best for something like a comic book and when you try to use them with media featuring heavy amounts of movement, the effect just doesn't work as well. And in addition to that, the original color palette is washed out and lost. But that didn't stop Konami from putting this feature in Contra Legacy of War for the original PlayStation. Ew! The game itself isn't good and now I can't see it? Well, sh that's actually better. Slide 3 on the PlayStation 2 offered stages in 3D, of course being optional, viewable with glasses included within the manual. They even kind of look like Sly Cooper's eyes, which is a nice touch. Though both of these examples showcase how anytime Anaglyph 3D was featured in a game, it was always a complete gimmick with barely to no amounts of value. I need to do better research. In reality, there is one more notable use of Anaglyph 3D, and that's with Metal Gear Acid 2 on the PSP. Bundled in here is the Solid Eye, a foldable cardboard contraption that goes over the PSP screen to allow the player to view 3D images in game. This is something you'd expect to see on a Nintendo console long before a Sony one, and honestly, I feel like you can make endless connections between this and the modern method of obtaining inexpensive virtual reality by folding together cardboard and sliding a screen in there. Metal Gear Acid 2 did this all the way back in 2005. What's your excuse? Featuring 3D, however, was hardly ever a great selling point. I mean, most of these games save the explanation for the back cover. It's obvious not many people really cared about 3D. If they did, there would be far more applications in gaming than there ended up being. I think we were all happy with the story ending there. Nintendo and Sega tried it, tried it, and tried it, and nothing of note happened. In fact, it hurt their companies, if anything. And including paper 3D glasses was pretty much just a novelty. Most games that did it, they did it because they wanted to distract people from their game being as mediocre as it was. What? So by the year 2009, it was time to say goodbye. To reality! 3D is back in the mainstream! With the release of the movie Avatar, setting box office records with the 3D edition being held in high regards as THE version to see, everybody was all about 3D again. Every blockbuster film was releasing alongside a 3D version with some making the 3D the core identity of the flick, various classic movies were re-released in theaters in 3D, 3D TV sets were being sold as the next big thing with 3D Blu-rays and 3D Blu-ray players being pushed right alongside them. Yep, it was a good time to be stupid. Now, the release of Avatar in late 2009 wasn't the true beginning of this 3D resurrection, as these 3D products were being developed and produced within the year or two beforehand. But because of that, the film's release couldn't have happened at a more perfect time. Trying to give consumers a reason for wanting this became a whole lot easier after they came back from seeing Avatar in 3D. The hell was that? So in came the 3D revolution, with Sony being one of the biggest supporters. I wonder why. The PlayStation 3 received a firmware update in the fall of 2010, enabling support for 3D TVs. And not everybody could experience 3D on the PS3. You had to own a 3D TV. I don't see these logos on games this generation advertising 3D compatibility and cross my fingers when opening up the menus, turning on the functionality, thinking, once again, why wouldn't I just be able to use my paper glasses? Why wouldn't I just be able to be myself? All right, this is a 3D TV, and not just any 3D TV, the PlayStation 3D display. Yes, a TV with PlayStation branding all over it, much like how Sony named a theater the PlayStation Theater. Is there any relevance to the name? Well, obviously not. By most accounts, the PlayStation 3D display is just a regular 24-inch 3D TV. You can use any console on it, and if they support 3D TVs, you can experience it with this set. You get these glasses, which need to be recharged, which 
that right there sealed 3D TV's fate. Try explaining this to your dad. So not only is this not affordable like the paper glasses, but they need a power source, unlike the plastic movie theater glasses. I'm not disputing the need for power in glasses like these, but think of this from his perspective. This is my first 3D TV experience. It's also my last. This uses that active shutter technology, which is why the glasses need powered. The flicker between frames constantly helps maintain a high resolution image. Those cheaper 3D glasses, yeah, they may not need power, but their method of creating a 3D image basically split the image in half and in tandem, the resolution, so the image is much blurrier with these. So that's why we have glasses like these and why 3D TV is a specific technology, even though once again, I watched Shrek 3D on a portable DVD player in 2005. I know it's different, but I don't think consumers knew that. Well, here we go. A PlayStation 3 game in 3D. It's like I'm really there. You can only experience conventional 3D so many times before just going, yeah, I get it. Don't get me wrong, many of these titles that support 3D, they integrate it fairly well. The standout title here is Motor Storm Apocalypse, which was actually bundled with the PlayStation 3D display due to its use of SimulView, a feature on some Sony 3D TVs allowing for split screen without the split screen. Two people wearing 3D glasses would each separately see their own screen in multiplayer. No squished or cropped aspect ratio, no screen peaking. It was a notable idea. Only around six Games supported the feature because 7 was... <laughs> woo. For the most part, 3D PS3 games were your standard affair. More depth in your image, nothing crazy. I mean, a game like Uncharted 3 looks good in 3D, but no way in hell I'd want to play the entire game like this. More PS3 games supported this than Xbox 360. You can tell by the dedicated logo on the PS3 titles compared to the Arts and Crafts project in every 360 release. But most of these games work fine enough in 3D. They just aren't at all necessary. It's cool to see how the gun looks in Killzone 3, extending a bit outside the TV, and now fighting in Mortal Kombat has so many layers in the background. But then you have a Sonic Generations to ruin your breakfast. I don't buy it. This is some of the most unrealistic 3D I've ever experienced. And that's not even accounting for the fact well, I don't think this is possible. But the 3D feels like it's layered incorrectly. Sometimes it feels like background elements are in the foreground, while the foreground is in the background. I've seen numerous elements in double vision. On top of the fact when the 3D is noticeable, it's not really that deep, both literally and metaphorically. Like it barely sinks in and it just doesn't have anything of value to offer. It makes the game harder to play and when it works, it's not impressive in the slightest. Now, Let's be honest, this product format is obviously an evolution of those original 3D glasses we tried out for the Sega Master System and Famicom, though you used active shutters as well. The problem is, this is not a big enough evolution. Comparing these two products, they have far more in common than you may initially think, and they're 20 years apart from each other, with this one being heralded as the future. Like, yeah, it's more advanced, but like, they're doing the same sh Numerous console games from 2009 to 2013 supported 3D displays, none of which being all too necessary. It's like, yeah, Resistance 3 works fine in 3D, but who cares? You're not missing anything by not playing it in 3D. If anything, you're missing more by playing it in 3D because the image probably won't be as clear. Even with the most optimized games, double vision still pops up. But ever since 2013, it became so Damn, rare to see a stereoscopic video game release. Which this just so happened to be around the time 3D was starting to go out of fashion again. 3D TVs were seen as a fad, not even a fad that really caught on, more so a fad that TV manufacturers were desperately trying to make a fad. I mean, none of this made sense for the consumer. Why would you want your living room to feel like a theme park attraction? 3D is a concept that works in small doses when you're out and about. Why not? I'll try this out, make it more of a fun evening. Not as the default way to consume content recreationally, which is is why it's so interesting to see the most popular 3D device was f***ing hell again. Nintendo's back after, 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 after trying 3D. The Nintendo 3DS, the successor to the Nintendo DS, was unveiled at E3 2010, utilizing a screen capable of displaying 3D images without the need for special glasses. This was a big deal. The barrier between 3D and the rest of the world has finally been eliminated. Games can be in 3D without the hassle of needing to buy a 3D TV with clunky glasses. We can finally experience 3D normally as nature intended. The future for 3D content is bright and Nintendo was leading the chart. So Nintendo was said to go all in with the 3D craze, being the focal point of their latest handheld, the product line that was one of their most important, and those first few years of 3DS advertising pushed it hard. No need for glasses, games more immersive than 
ever before. Games that were far more precise with the aid of 3D. While the Nintendo 3DS's main gimmick leaned a bit hard into Virtual Boy territory, so do I. But this felt like Nintendo truly learned some lessons from that experience. For one, you can turn off the 3D. You don't ever have to play with it on or if you don't want to. And if you do play with it on, you can adjust the intensity on the fly. That would have been a great feature on the 3D TV's glasses. This is the most user-friendly application of stereoscopy that exists, and it works beautifully without glasses. Of course, you have to hold the system dead on for the effect to work properly, but if you do that, it'll work properly. And the games themselves, I mean, talk about the best uses of 3D so far in gaming. Super Mario 3D Land was designed around it, making it easier to properly land jumps. Kirby Triple Deluxe, Planet Robobot, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, and Mutant Muds have you hopping between the foreground and background. Remakes like Star Fox 64 3D, Ocarina of Time 3D, Majora's Mask 3D, Xenoblade 3D, all implement the feature beautifully and breathe new life into iconic worlds. I'd say Mario 3D Land may be the only example of a game that may need 3D more than it doesn't, but many titles on the 3DS utilized it quite well, and being a flick of the slider away gave the 3D effect way more of an impact than going through hell and back to play Sonic Generations poorly. Now, I can play Sonic Generations poorly because the 3D isn't the issue, it's the game itself that f***ing stinks. Luigi's Mansion received a sequel on the 3DS, Dark Moon, with superb 3D in tow. Like I said about the first game, the room-to-room -room camera angle made that game feel right at home using the gimmick, so a sequel coming to Nintendo's 3D handheld it just felt like destiny. And then the original itself was remade entirely for the 3DS, so good for you, Nintendo. You fulfilled a lifelong desire twice. Why are you still so angry? Many 3DS games just have fine enough 3D effects, with a few having poorly implemented 3D and some just straight up not including it for whatever reasons. But the ones that knocked it out of the park, those were the games that truly made the 3D effect worth it. Not that much. Yeah, the 3DS was priced at $250 at launch, and after a successful first month, Nothing. Well, that is if you count no sales as nothing. Nintendo had to slash the price just four months into the handheld's life. That is unprecedented. But once Nintendo wised up and focused more on the actual games, sales went up and kept going up. And by 2013, the 3DS experienced its most content-rich year yet. I mean, so many good games to play, and to celebrate, Nintendo gutted their child. The Nintendo 2DS, releasing just two and a half years after the 3DS initially launched, got rid of the 3D display and a few other superfluous features to offer a much more affordable and kid-friendly product. And remember, 3D is not meant for the eyes of a child, so for Nintendo to sell a product that has a giant warning, making it somewhat inaccessible to children under seven with a new Pokemon game coming out? What have we done? And while 3D in the 3DS wasn't killed off with the introduction of the 2DS, it was obviously downplayed in the marketing for a bit there. The new 3DS and new 3DS XL revisions improved upon the 3D effect, utilizing eye tracking to ensure you don't need to hold the 3DS directly in front of your face all the time for the effect to work, and a few more big titles released, touting excellent use of 3D, like Metroid Samus Returns in 2017. But around that same time, more games were being put out without 3D at all on the 3DS, obviously because by this time, Nintendo knew most of the handheld's install base weren't playing with the slider up. So in the twilight years of the portable, when Nintendo was pumping out lower priority and budget software to keep it alive just in case the recently released Nintendo Switch bombed, they thought, why bother putting a good chunk of development time into a feature barely anybody was using? Yeah, 3D takes time and money to properly implement. It's a whole ass another realm to consider when crafting your project. And the 3DS was the best way to experience it. Easy, comfortable, non-intrusive, perfect. But because of how non-intrusive it was, as easy as it was to experience, it was even easier to just not experience it at all and just play a game normally. And the fact Nintendo didn't bring the feature over to the Nintendo Switch it says it all right there. But 3D isn't dead entirely because everything it brought to the table, things flying in your face, being able to see depth in our games, it's all here in virtual reality. And let's be honest, if you're gonna ask us to put goggles on to be immersed in a game, just go all the way, man. <laughs>